Well, you guys, I am up in far northern New Hampshire near the border of Vermont. And I've been hiking along with these snowshoes on here. And I'll tell you what, guys, that is a workout for the hip flexors. But I've got my Springboks rugby cap on, South African rugby, and I've got my fancy neck beard here, as you can see, all bundled up. And it is quite different from Texas. I know I've said that many times, but once again, we don't get much snow in Texas. And like Texas, there are lots of thorns. As you can see here, there's some spikes that you don't want to mess with. But I am looking for my shelter for the time being, and I think I see it coming up right here through this little opening here. So, this will be my first time staying in a teepee. We have some deer, and around the corner, we've got a big moose. A little birdie told me that there's a pond around there, so hopefully we can get to some fishing, but we'll see what the conditions are. I'm excited to get adventuring around in the snow because it's not something I get to do very often. But I know there's a lot of the uh, fire starting trees that I use up in Maine. I think they're called balsa wood firs or balsa firs. And yeah, let's go inside. So if you don't know how a TP works, it is this canvas that is wrapped all the way around with this frame going up to a hole in the top, as you can see there. And we've got this other layer of canvas right here. And then down there, we've got some gaps going out into the daylight. So in the winter, we were told that you want to make sure, I will stop moving my feet because they are very loud, that you want to make sure that you keep the little gaps right down there open because when you start a fire inside of a teepee like you normally do to keep yourself warm the smoke is gonna go up and if it's closed in the smoke will just go everywhere so you want sort of some airflow going through so that you can not die of smoke inhalation so we're gonna make sure to keep that clear and here we've got our fancy little fire pit as you can see and a lot of fancy little firewood and then we've got the whole setup in here some mats and whatnot to sleep on so it should be a step up from tent camping for sure um, but yeah got a dream catcher over there so that it will catch my dreams no bad dreams for me but it is definitely a very unique look and it's so cool it should look pretty sweet once we get a fire going inside here but yeah we uh, the snow had just stopped falling. It was falling when we were hiking in. But yeah, it's beautiful having the fresh snow fall. It's just this pure white. And what do you guys say? We get to some adventure. These are the balsa wood firs with their little poppable pimples, as you can see. And there's the fire starter. It's pretty thick since it's so cold out, but I'm sure it will still have the same effect. Oop. So, as you can see, this is pretty much untouched snow, except for all the little bunny tracks that are around here. And I'm hoping to happen upon a moose. I mean, look at this place. This looks like moose territory. Yep. So yeah, here's some fresh snow falling and the sun's starting to come out. It is a pretty beautiful day. Now one thing you want to be aware of when you're walking along bodies of water like this is that you could very easily fall through this stuff. Even though it looks like solid land, it could be thin layer of ice or like a shelf of snow that you could step and it would just pop right through. So you want to be aware of that so that you can correct yourself if something does go wrong or just go ahead and walk away from the water. Luckily this stuff isn't too deep so if something does go wrong it should be good. So I see right here across the pond if you look there's some tracks there and I'm wondering if those aren't beaver because I don't think they really have alligators here so <laughs> shouldn't be an alligator. But yeah we'll go investigate. Ooh. 
So there are the tracks. There's some ice here. And it's not very reliable ice, so as I was walking along there, you see it kind of slipped. But this stuff, you can see the stick goes right through it like that. And I'm guessing it extends a little ways. So, yep. <laughs> I was very correct on the fact that it extends a little ways. But, yeah, hopefully my boots stay waterproof. Even though they aren't waterproof. But yeah, always be cautious when you're walking along, otherwise you'll do exactly what I just did. And if you're unlucky, you'll be even in even deeper water. Man, it is so hard to tell what's water and what's not. Why walking sticks important. So we're just gonna follow these tracks and see where they go. Slipping and sliding around here. I wonder exactly what it was. Looks like it's crawling on its belly. Snowshoes do not make you very stealthy. Well, looks like it goes in there, huh, and that's water, so I gotta be careful what I'm standing on, because as you can see, my stick goes right through. Holy cow. Let's go into the woods. I don't like walking on the water. And this is sweet. It's not something I get right around where I live, so. Cool. It's getting all the mud off my boots. So far, got dry toes. Don't want to jinx anything, because I know the exterior did get wet when I plopped in. But look at this place, holy cow. It's gorgeous. All sorts of little tracks and evidence of what's going on here. Every little plop in the snow typically has a story, whether it's a little animal running through or an acorn falling out of a tree or Alec falling in the water, you never know. All right, I think we're gonna try and head up and see if we can get a lay of the land. You know, the good thing about being out in the snow is that I have some very prominent tracks as you can probably see behind me. And so if I do get lost, I can always backtrack and that's why you don't want to get caught out in a blizzard is because they will cover up your tracks and then you're in a world of trouble. Oof. That's some steep snow. <sighs> My Gandalf stick isn't doing me very, doing very well. Probably because it's too short. Uh, the trees restrict you from seeing much. Yeah, there's a lot more animal activity up here. You see it looks like some rabbit tracks hopping around, which means a fox isn't far behind, most likely, because they got those guys here. Got snowshoe hares, they got moose, all sorts of cool animals. So as I'm going down this hill here, I notice that it's so steep that if I lift up my toes where the spikes are, they turn into skis, my snowshoes. Oh jeez. But yeah, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Otherwise, I will fall upon my bum. So there's all these tracks circling around the beaver pond. I'm trying to figure out if they're a person or not because they're kind of messed up from the snow. But they sure are deep, so the person probably isn't wearing boots, because as you can see, I'm not going down near that far. As that, like that's a deep track. Whoever's walking around here probably has snow in their pants now. Unless it was a moose, so there's my tracks. But those are not my tracks. I don't know. 
Maybe we'll find who made them. Maybe we'll make... Okay, we're out of the forest and back by the beaver pond. Just went through for a second time. Oh well. It's very unpredictable where these little spots are. Poking around with the stick. Right here it was solid, right here it was not. So I guess I should have walked right here instead of right here. But oh well. Isn't it a beautiful view? So I'm going to attempt to cross this thing with snowshoes covered in mud. Okay, so maybe, maybe not. That's a pretty thin thing right there. Yeah, I'll, I'll put my foot on it, see what happens. Seems pretty solid. I'm gonna walk sideways though. And the stick does not help much on the bog. All right, we're good so far. Hope I didn't just jinx myself. Ah. I jinxed myself, okay. Let's try it again. Is that trunk there? Not very big. Might have to do an epic jump and hope my snowshoe doesn't get caught on one of these branches. Oh boy. Why did I just find a cave? <laughs> the stick was solid and then disappear into the ground all of a sudden. Okay. Oh, I tried to jump in the stick was stuck. Here we go. That was easy. Well, you guys, the sun is starting to go down and it is gorgeous. Check out those clouds. They're really giving off some nice colors. And there's this little stream right here. Don't want to step on that. I've learned my lesson. Man, it's gonna be a cool sunset once it really starts to go down. But I seem to have lost my GoPro, or not my GoPro. <laughs> I did lose a GoPro, but this time I lost my radio. You might have seen it right here. And I think watching back my footage, I know where it is. So let's go see if I didn't lose it when I fell backwards to save myself from falling in the creek for the third time. Oh my goodness, I'm just not, not made for snowshoes. <laughs> Man, look at those clouds. Looks like a painting. You couldn't ask for a more gorgeous scenery, holy cow. Gotta love it. Let's keep on moving. Time to cross another little stream. Get the snow off as best I can. So that it's not weighing me down. There's a log there, but I don't really know if I want to use it. Might just give the jump a go. Two feet. And just jump for it because it's hard to get a running jump with these things on. Wish me luck. Here we go. Three, two, oh, yes. We did it. Assuming nothing fell out of my bag again. Mm, looks good. Alright, we are coming up on the area that I think my radio fell off. And I see something black in the snow already. Is that it? Did Alec actually find his radio? Join in next week to find out if Alec found his radio. Just kidding, I actually found my radio. 
Here we go. <laughs> Alright you guys, so I am in the TP, as you can probably tell, and it's nice because now everything's thawing out. Um, there's no more ice on my camera, and my fingers were a bit damp, and my foot is smoking for some reason, as you can see clearly there. But, yeah, that's odd. <laughs> but I'm going to show you guys around a little bit and talk to you about a snowshoe. So, it's not something I've ever used before in the past, this is my first time using it, apart from my very professional snowshoe that I made in Washington. And that didn't do me too much good. But, the way that it works is surface area. So, it's like when walking on ice where if you start to break through you kind of want to disperse your weight so that you don't break through because the more surface area that you're putting your weight on the less likely it is that you're gonna reach the breaking point of the snow or the ice so that's a big part and here you've got the little foothold so you just slide your foot in like that and then you strap it around the back of your heel with this and then in addition to it being this giant um, like foot thing You've also got these spikes on it, and that just gives you grip. you got some toe spikes as well. But you don't want to go stepping on anybody's feet with these guys. I've been stepped on many times with rugby cleats, and I'm pretty sure this would be even worse. I mean, look at those things. Spiky. But yeah, they definitely are quite a hassle, but in the end, they do help you out a lot in the right conditions. So it's nice to have them. So, as far as my impressions of the TP go so far, I'm liking it. It's nice, it's warm, because we got this giant fire here in the middle. And the cool thing is, you don't even smell the smoke. I mean, it's all going right up through that hole, up there in the darkness, because of the way that the TP is built. And, yeah, it's, it's a good setup. It keeps you warm, it's, it's nice. And then I got these cool candles over here like I'm about to break out my Ouija board but don't worry I won't do that and yeah I'm getting pretty hungry all that walking around out there in the snow is quite tiring so what do you say we get something to eat <laughs> Well, that was actually a pleasant night's sleep. <sighs> Alright, guys, so that last scene was brought to you by the warmth of this fire. Um, I have lithium ion batteries in my camera, and I know I've also got them in my phone. And when I take snowflake photos, a lot of the time my phone will randomly turn off because of the cold. So I figured. Hey, I've got a dead battery in my camera, I can't film anymore, maybe I'll warm it up by the fire and in my hands, and looky there, it worked. But now I see the battery's going back down, it lasted me the time that I needed, so we're good to go. But, let's get outside. Something chewing around inside there. Looks like sawdust, it might be, I don't know, boring beetles, and then the woodpecker came to get them, or something like that. But yeah, 
interesting. Lots of little clues hidden about as to what's going on here. So at the moment, I'm heading upwards, and I noticed this giant bus looking thing over here. Pretty sure it's a boulder, but it's kind of hard to tell what exactly it could be, because And there's a fungusy tree over there. But yeah, let's go check this out. So this boulder is like a terrarium in itself. Look at all these plants. Ooh, I might crawl down there. That looks fun. But yeah, so here's some ferns and some like lichens and mosses. All sorts of stuff. So I heard there's a porcupine den around here. Hopefully this isn't it. Otherwise the porcupine's not gonna be too happy that I'm going to this house. But yeah, that's a cool little shelter. It's pretty snug in here. Try not to breathe on the lens because you are fogging up. But yeah. goes back for a ways, I don't know if you can see that. But there's a pretty big gap. That can definitely hold a porcupine. Fun part will be getting out of here. What if there's an earthquake right now and I just got smushed? Found evidence of Mr. Porcupine back here. As we go in between these two rocks, you can see those are not cocoa puffs. Those are the remnants of Mr. Porcupine. I'm guessing he is back there. I don't know, maybe they're the type of animal who like has a specific area for their bathroom. Or maybe he was right by my leg when I was in his den. If that was his den. Look at that. Look at that. It's a weird looking icicle right there. He's got a brown tip. Running through. Here. But yeah, here's porcupine skit. I bet you he's back there. If he's not out and about. So, if you guys remember when I fell in on the other side, I was venturing over to see what looked like a little trail and over here by the porcupine den on the other side of the pond is the other side of the trail so yeah there it is going out I'm guessing this is from the porcupine because he's one of the only known active little dudes around here so yeah maybe we'll see him at some point that would be pretty cool There's a trail here coming down from where the porcupine lives and it goes into the water now. Maybe he was just drinking here because that water's not very deep so he must have just came to get a drink. But we just spotted something over here. It was super fast but you guys it's so cold out here that I'm having to keep my batteries in my pants in order to keep them warm because when they get too cold they die a lot faster. But we'll go adventuring over into this side. Haven't been over here yet, so take it slow, stay cautious so that I don't fall through the ice for the fourth time. Well, you guys, I think we're about to have to wrap up this adventure. It was a lot of fun. We saw lots of traces of animals, you know, trails and poo-poo uh, and whatnot, uh, their homes, etc. But you guys, it is a beautiful view and that's really what I came here for is to enjoy this view that I don't ever see in Texas because we don't get snow like this. We get little pieces of frost on the grass that cancel every school district in the area. So 
I really enjoyed it and I hope you guys did too. It was my first time camping in a teepee and it was a lot of fun and it was definitely a lot more comfortable than a conventional tent because I had a fire inside. If I put a fire inside my normal tent, bad things would happen. But I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And I gotta get going back down south, back to the warmth. So until next time you guys, stay wild!